Good evening. I'm Rich Crampanis, and welcome to WPDE's second annual All Zone Awards Show. We're here at Wild Wing Plantation honoring the top 40 players in our backyard. We'll meet them all over the next hour. In addition, we'll present the All Zone Fan Awards. All the voting on the internet's been tabulated. We'll show you the top plays of the year. And of course, we have the Zoman. Black tape covered right now over the winner of the second annual Zoman. We'll meet the three finalists and learn much more about them. Throughout the evening, our WPDE sports team will be roaming the banquet hall. Mark Haggard talking with the area coaches. He's standing by with the man who guided the Timminsville Whirlwinds to the 1A lower state crown. Mark? Thanks, Rich. Coach Bill Tate joining us from Timminsville. And Coach, people didn't talk to you this year in Timminsville much during the regular season. People don't talk to you if you don't beat Lamar. But you finally did beat Lamar, and you beat him when it counted in the lower state. Yeah, well, if you don't beat Lamar, you you have to leave. Uh, they ask you to leave, especially if you don't beat him over, over a period of two or three years. We had a, a, a great run against Lamar because they're always tough. We're always going to have those kind of games. It's going to go down to the wire. Uh, it usually turns uh, play right there at the end of the football game. They beat us uh, with uh, with about one second the first time with, with a field goal. And, of course, this time we beat them 7-6 and those are the kind of games we have. And we expect that again next year and the next year and the next year. So that's a typical Lamar game, typical. You're kind of a rare bird. You're one of the only guys with a stadium named after you. You've been at Timminsville for 32 years. This was a real special group, though. You got them to play together, and finally you peaked when it counted, and that was in the playoffs. Well, usually when they name a stadium after you, you're usually underground. I, I am above ground. Um, but, uh, you know, this group, nobody really uh, – at the beginning of the season, you know, we, we weren't ranked, and, and, and uh, most of these guys were unknowns. So they surprised me. And so every game we won, I was kind of surprised. I thought we'd f finish in the middle of the pack. But uh, they came along, and, and, and we worked hard. And I think uh, the, the member of Coach Mance had something to do with that, too, because these guys dedicated themselves to try to, to do all they could to, to, to have a good season in, in his memory. The great Bill Tate of Timminsville. Now back to you, Rich. Let's get started and meet our all-zone quarterbacks and running backs. Zeke Morris came a long way to Timminsville from deep in the heart of Texas. The transfer from a 5A power in Austin had no adjustment problems to the whirlwinds. A dual threat for Bill Tate, Zeke had 11 touchdown passes to go along with six rushing scores. Savell Newton is a Zoman finalist. The Marlboro County signal caller put up staggering numbers as a junior. In the air, Savell threw for over 1,500 yards and 20 touchdowns. On the ground, 1,800 plus yards and 20 scores as well. The man they call strictly business showed that business was real good in Bennettsville this year. Don't be fooled by Darnell Williams' height. The South Florence quarterback proved that athleticism and heart go a long way on the gridiron. With over 1,700 yards of combined offense and 30 touchdowns through the air and on the ground, Williams won the respect of everyone in the area. Alex Gaston is back for a second stint on the all-zone team. The explosive Shara back had 1,784 yards on the ground and 27 touchdowns in helping the Braves to a region championship. Just like last year, when Gaston had the ball in his hands, exciting things happened. Andres Perkins caught the attention of every opposing coach. The West Florence back helped guide the Knights to their first win in three years. With 1,828 yards and 17 scores, Perk is heading to the North-South game. He finished fifth in the Zoman balloting. Raleigh Singletary was a catalyst in Dillon's perfect regular season. Raleigh racked up 1,413 yards and 15 scores despite missing the last two games due to injury. Throughout the year, Singletary showed his bruising running style mixed in with a flash of speed. Nathaniel Smith is only a junior, but the Georgetown star has shown a veteran presence. Smith averaged 8.8 .8 yards per carry, finding the zone 19 times on 1,281 yards. Nathaniel's explosive play helped the Bulldogs reach the eight-win mark for the first time in school history. Another junior in the backfield is Myrtle Beach's Tony Wallace. The workhorse had 321 carries, totaling 1,829 yards as the Seahawks reached the second round of the Class 3A playoffs. 
Rounding out our running core is North Myrtle Beach's James Wilson. The centerpiece of the Chiefs' resurgence was the fourth selection in the Zoman, and the numbers back it up. With 1,662 yards and 20 touchdowns, Wilson and North Myrtle Beach shocked top seed Georgetown in the first round of the 3A playoffs. All right, here we are with uh, South Florence quarterback Darnell Williams. And Darnell, as Rich said earlier, uh, when people look at you stature-wise, um, you're a little smaller than most of the guys. You don't use power, but you use a lot of quickness and speed, uh, and it seems like you did a heck of a job this year. Yeah, um, we had a really good team this year. I thought our season could have been better. It was real good, and I just um, I thank God for the ability that he gave me being the size that I am. My mom didn't want me to play football at first, but I'm glad I did. Um, speaking of that, South Florence comes out of a, came out of a tough region this year. Uh, talk a little bit about the teams that, uh, that came out of that region. Uh, as you can see, Marlboro County Conway State Championship, and Crest was another good team. So we really had a tough. We played played our hardest against every team. <clears throat> Do you see yourself uh, also a basketball player, perhaps maybe uh, at our all hoop zone banquet? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks a lot. Once again, I am with <laughs> Williams, quarterback at South Florence. I don't know if we have enough footballs, but this is a tough bunch right here behind me. Time to take a break. When we come back, we'll meet the wide receivers and tight ends. That's when our All Zone special continues from Wild Wing Plantation right after this. Welcome back to WPDE's All Zone special. We have quarterbacks and running backs. Now we need to find someone to throw it to. Coach Mark Haggard standing by with another coach, Gerald Harrison. Thanks, Rich. Coach Gerald Harrison of the Darlington Falcons and Coach Harrison, you had a, quite a year, uh, particularly through the air. Your passing attack was unbelievable, as evidenced by a 59-58 to 58 game against Carolina Forest. You know, that reminded me of that Mississippi and uh, Arkansas game. Uh, we just didn't know when it was going to end. Uh, unfortunately, we were on the wrong end of that score. Though. Well, I tell you what, though, you had a great year and a lot of great highlights out of your kids. Well, we uh, did have some exciting times. We had a very young team, and... Uh, we're looking forward to getting started again next year. All right, speaking of the air attack, we'll go back to Rich. Let's go to the air and meet our all zone wide receivers and tight ends. <laughs> Darlington's Herb Carraway was instant offense for the Falcons. Kevin Godfrey's favorite target showed sure hands and a great ability to run after the catch. Conway's Chris McDonald is a complete player. Besides 21 grabs for 383 yards and four scores, he averaged 45 yards per kick return and 167 yards rushing. In Bennettsville, they call Ronnie Purvis the Rock, and he was rock steady for Marlboro County in 2001. Savelle Newton's favorite target had 23 catches for 633 yards and eight touchdowns, averaging 27.5 yards per catch. The youngest player on the All-Zone team is Wilson's sophomore, Waleed Rushton. The Tigers' wideout emerged as the top target in the four wide receiver set. With 32 catches for 482 yards and seven touchdowns, Waleed could be an All-Zone fixture for years to come. Tony Washington put up big numbers for Jackie Hayes' Dylan Wildcats. Michael McLaurin's top priority had 29 catches for 548 yards and 10 touchdowns good for 18.9 yards per catch. Emmanuel Dobson had a nose for the end zone throughout the season for the Lamar Silver Foxes. When Matthew Norris threw to Dobson, the rugged tight end did major damage after the catch. He had 15 grabs for 232 yards and two TDs, averaging 15.5 yards per reception. Chaz Howell has had a memorable senior season. The East Clarendon 2A player is heading to the Shrine Bowl and adds a spot to the all-zone team on his resume. Joining me now is Marlboro County wide receiver Ronnie Purvis. Ronnie, we were talking earlier. Your nickname's The Rock. I nicknamed you Never Nervous Purvis, but it looks like you're pretty nervous up here right now. I don't really have a camera shot. It seemed uh, throughout your highlights you weren't too camera shy. You guys had a heck of a year undefeated in the state championship, and uh, you were a big part of, uh, you have Black D, but you got, also got a little Black O in there, too. Yes, yeah, so, uh, we worked hard uh, somewhere around that camp, and uh, the two of days during spring, spring practice and stuff, 
working on uh, getting better because we said our senior year was uh, trying to take us back to the state. I was going to try to lead the team and take them back to the state. And so that's what I did. All right, well, congratulations uh, on the all zone team uh, wide receivers. Thank you. Tell you what, this is one quick bunch behind me. They might head right off the stage before we go to break. But it is time to take a break. When we come back, somebody's got a block for this team. We'll check out the offensive and defensive line. That's when our All Zone special continues from Wild Wing Plantation right after this. Welcome back to Wild Wing Plantation. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll take a look at the three Zoman finalists, plus we'll reveal your votes for the top plays of the 2001 high school football season. Right now, Mark Haggard is standing by with a man who guided the Conway Tigers all the way to Columbia. That's right, Rich. Conway High made it all the way to the state finals. Few thought they would get there. You probably did, Coach Chuck Jordan. But uh, you had to do, go on the road to do it. Uh, three straight road wins and uh, finally made it to the state finals, despite finishing third in your region. Yes, I was real pleased with the way we played, particularly toward the end of the year. And, uh, you know, two factors that are involved. you got to be playing your best football at that time of the year. and you got to be healthy. And, and we were both of those. And I think that's what allowed us to, to go as far as we did. Tremendous season now back to you. Coastal Carolina, you're one of the three guys that they interviewed. Well, let's talk about this just a moment. What's your interest level in that position? No comment. All right, no comment. There you heard it. Uh, we'll just have to ferret that story out ourselves. Rich? Here comes the beef of the all-zone team. Let's meet our offensive line. Michael Johnson is the base of Conway's offensive line. The Shrine Bowl selection consistently graded out at 95% for Chuck Jordan, boasting 18 pancake blocks. Titus Presley is representing the Mullins Auctioneers. Playing on both sides of the line, Titus was a big contributor to the 2A Lower State Finals run for Denver Cromer's squad. Clyde Reed is drawing plenty of Division I attention. The Carver's Bay linemen opened up big holes for the Bears' backfield, as well as disrupt on the defensive side. Six foot seven, 315 pound Chad Toothman is a Mr. Football finalist. The Myrtle Beach Seahawks boasts a GPA of over 3.9 and the attention of such schools as Maryland, Duke, Wisconsin, and Boston College. He opened up many a hole for Tony Wallace and Marcus Rush. Fred Townsend brings tremendous speed on a 6'1", 250-pound frame. Whether it's making the big play on D or opening up holes for Bernard Galloway, Tim Frazier, and Savelle Newton, this guy's an all-zoner. Mike Smithson represents Carolina Forest as our all-zone kicker. He was 19 of 20 on extra points and booted six field goals highlighted by this 51-yarder. Joining me now is Myrtle Beach's Chad Toothman. And uh, Chad, they said you were 6'7", 315. It looks like you've slimmed down. You're probably 308, 307. Uh, actually, I've slimmed down a lot more than that. I used to weigh a lot more. And uh, on the offseason, coach said either lose it or we're losing you, so I had to do the job. Uh, now you're here with uh, the top 40 players in our area. You're also on the uh, North-South team. Um, those are two uh, pretty big honors for you. Uh, yes, sir. It's a great honor to be mentioned with these fellas and be on the North-South squad. And hopefully the South will rise on Saturday. <laughs> All right, well, good luck to you on uh, Saturday. And uh, Rich, Chad Toothman, the offensive and defensive lineman from Myrtle Beach. Tell you what, the next time I need some time from the producers, I'm going to bring this crew in right here. You guys, these are some big guys right here. They're the blockers for our all-zone team. Time to take a break. When we come back, we'll meet the defense of the all-zone team. That's when our special continues from Wild Wing Plantation right after this. Welcome back to WPDE's All Zone Special here from Wild Wing Plantation. I'm Rich Crampanis. We just met the 20 players on the offensive side of the ball for our All Zone team. Now it's time to meet the defense. We'll go now to Mark Haggard, who's standing by with the Wizard of Marlboro County, Dr. Boyd. All right, thanks a lot, Rich. Dr. Dean Boyd, who uh, owns that black D, that tough Marlboro County defense, but the offense was pretty darn good, too. You won the state championship, a 17-10 win over Conway. Wow, and what a roster you've got. Talk about that state championship. You're second in five years. Oh, we had an outstanding year. Our kids played extremely well, and... Uh, 
they, they worked for it. They worked hard in the off season. They did the things they had to do, and we're real proud of them. I mean, uh, we had a lot of seniors, though, so we've got a lot of rebuilding to do, and uh, I got a feeling there's going to be a lot of payback next year. <laughs> yeah, all right. I bet a lot of people in here would like to have the rebuilding you're going to do next year. I've seen your guys that you've got coming back, but uh, again, a, a fine season for you, and uh, Marlboro County is getting to be old hat for you. I think that you might be just the best team overall in the state, Big 16 or otherwise. I don't know. That it's, it would be nice to say that, but, you know, we just uh, – this year I think our fellas just went out and played hard, and they played each game, and they won each game, and, and that's a big key. And I think that every time we gave them a big challenge and put somebody in front of them, we just told them they had to rise to the occasion. They were able to do that, and I guess that, that puts them in a, a class of their own for this season. But, you know, as we told our kids uh, when we came back uh, Friday night is that the season's over now. We've got to get started for next year. Congratulations to Coach Dean Boyd and the Marlboro County Bulldogs, 4A state champions. Rich? 4-3 or 3-4, three, either way you shake it out, our front seven is going to be awfully tough. Let's meet the defensive line and linebackers on our all-zone team. D'Angelo Brown is the leader of the King Street defense. It didn't take long for opposing quarterbacks to find out the Jaguars predator was cleaning up. The 2001 Shrine Bowl selection was one reason that Reggie Kennedy and company had a region championship. Quincy Darley is heading to the Shrine Bowl. The Manning defensive end has scholarship offers from Georgia Tech and Wake Forest. Darley did it all. 96 tackles, 15 for a loss, 9 sacks, and 18 quarterback pressures. Joey Drayton is representing the Marion Swamp Foxes. Besides being a reliable blocking tight end and receiver, he totaled 142 tackles in his career on the defensive line. Antoine Morgan is the comeback story of the all-zone team. After a serious car accident, the two-way star had a tremendous senior season, leading the Bulldogs with 14 sacks. On top of that, Morgan was just another weapon in the Marlboro County offense at tight end. Franklin Walker is an outstanding blocking tight end, but we're going to slot him at defensive end. He led the Bulldogs with 75 tackles. Corey Groover is our second Zoman finalist and a Mr. Football finalist as well. The linebacker heading to Clemson had 129 tackles and six sacks. He also had over 1,800 all-purpose yards and a total of 25 touchdowns. Adam McNemma is the third Myrtle Beach Seahawk on the all-zone team. The middle linebacker was the area's second leading tackler with 149, along with the ability to pressure the quarterback. Randy Jeffrey is the two-way catalyst for Lamar. Area fans will recognize number eight in the backfield racking up big yards, but he's a diamond in the rough at linebacker. Jeffrey was the leader of a defense that stepped it up in the postseason. Another two-way star is Loris's Porter Johnson. While he was racking up huge yards on offense, Porter was quietly the anchor of the Lions D. Quinton Robinson is heading to the North-South game and is the Lake City representative on the All-Zone team. The 6-foot, 210-pound linebacker is an all-region selection, putting up the best tackle numbers in the past decade for Mickey Moss. Anthony Waters is the third Zolman finalist. The Clemson-bound linebacker had 1,040 yards on the ground and 17 scores, while defensively he had 106 tackles and 12 stops for a loss. Perhaps the most underrated member of our linebacker core is Wilson Shannad Williams. Besides 76 tackles and nine quarterback sacks, Williams may be the best punt blocker in the state, recording five blocks on special teams. Joining me now is Shannad Williams from Wilson High School. Shannad, uh, this is a great bunch of guys here, linebackers and uh, defensive line. Obviously, uh, you guys like to hit. Of course, um, we're the back one of the defense, and uh, we're like the quarterbacks on the defense. We ought to step up and know what everybody's doing in order to make big plays. All right, now talk about this Wilson team. This is a team that's young that's going to come back and open up some eyes. You guys had uh, uh, a big upset and also a real close one there in uh, Camden. Oh, uh, yes, we um was underrated a lot this year, but we all came out and we knew we had to do. We had one thing in mind. We tried our best, and uh, Camden's a good team. But next year, we're going to get a very strong team to be ready All right, well, congratulations once again. Shanad Williams joining me from Wilson High School. 
a menacing group behind me. This here is a quarterback's worst nightmare. Time to take a break. When we come back, we'll round out the all-zone team with our secondary. That's when our special continues from here at Wild Wing Plantation right after this. Welcome back to the show. We round out the rest of our all-zone team, but first we head over to Mark Haggard. Thanks, Rich. I'm here with Hemingway head coach Ralph Harrell. 28 years at Hemingway, and this was one of your finest seasons ever. You won the region and went pretty deep into the playoffs, going to the lower state uh, semifinals. You know, I guess all roads lead through Timmonsville, and they cut us off short again. But it was a special year because I had a bunch of overachievers that just did everything we asked them to do. Let's talk about this team, particularly on defense. Uh, our defense was great. We gave up 41 points on defense. Offense gave up 55. Of it. We had a lost few ball games that way. They're not just a basketball school at Hemingway, although they've won some state championships in basketball. Ralph Harrell of the Hemingway Tigers. We close out our all zone team by meeting the secondary. <laughs> Fred Bennett has some gaudy numbers at wideout, but he's on our all-zone team in the secondary. The verbal commitment to Clemson had six interceptions, despite not being thrown at very often. Hemingway's Ulysses Brown was part of a Tigers defense that did not give up a single point in region play. Brown led the state in interceptions with 11. Copel Jackson was part of a tenacious Conway secondary. He had 99 tackles and five INTs, including a touchdown. The eraser rubbed out many an opponent's passing attack. Clarence Joyner is a tremendous two-way athlete. The Hannah Pamplico star reached the end zone 23 times for the Raiders on offense, but will stick him in the secondary where he got the job done with three picks. Quinton Teal is the fifth Marlboro County Bulldog on the all-zone squad. He had six interceptions for the Region 5-4A champs. Rounding out the all-zone squad is Loris's Joe Willard. Besides putting up big numbers as a wide receiver, he led the Lions with seven interceptions. Joining me now is the Manning Monarchs defensive back, Fred Bennett. And Fred, your brother last year, King, was on the team. You got a younger brother, Cedric. You're kind of in the middle here, but uh, a lot of Bennett's going through uh, Manning. Yeah, well, I enjoy playing with my brother. Uh, King last year, he kind of was the leader of our team. He led us to the state championship. I think he rushed for close to 2,000 yards. We kind of missed him this year, but we had my other brother, my younger brother, Cedric. He kind of was the main factor this year. He fought a lot of injuries, but we came short in the playoffs. Uh, verbal commitment to Clemson, that's going to be exciting as well? Yes, sir. It's going to be real exciting. All right. Uh, joining me uh, is Fred Bennett from Manning. Congratulations, uh, defensive backs. And there are 40 members of our all-zone team. The secondary... These guys dress real well. They look like they're ready to play on Sunday with those threats. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll reveal the top plays of the year. The votes are in for your top plays, the All Zone Fan Awards. Plus, we'll meet our Scholar Athlete of the Year. That's when our show continues right here from Wild Wing Plantation right after this. Welcome back to the show. The fans are just as much part of the end zone as any aspect of the high school football experience. And we want to thank all of the fans who logged on to our website, WPDE.com. We had five nominees in six categories for the All Zone Plays of the Year. When it was all said and done, over 1,900 votes were tallied in just under three weeks. And the public has spoken. Without any further ado, here are our All Zone Plays of the Year. Marlboro County, Savelle Newton does it all against Crestwood. Hi, my name is Savelle Newton, and I just want to thank everyone who went on the online and whatever internet to vote for me as the run of the year. And I want to thank the offensive line for making that run possible. And WP, you know, 15, you know, thank you for everything. Marlboro County Savelle Newton airs it out to Antonio Gould against West Florence. I 
My name is Savelle Newton again. I'm Antonio Goo. And uh, we, again, we just want to thank everyone who went online and internet and voted for us for the past of the year. And we just want to say thank you to the coaches who have made it possible. And to Channel 15 again, thank you. Marlboro County's Antoine Morgan with the big sack against Northwestern. I'm Antoine Morgan from Marlboro County. Uh, I won sack of the year for the fan poll. And I would like to thank everybody that voted, uh, coaches, fans, parents, and anybody else I may have forgot that voted for me. Thank you. Marlboro County's Quinton Teal smacks Northwestern. Hi, my name is Quentin Teal from Marlboro County, and I'm number seven. And I would like to thank WPDE for the nominating me for the the hit of the year. And I want to thank everybody that voted for me. And a pamphlet goes Corey Groover on the opening kickoff at Lakeview. My name is Corey Groove from the Hampton Gorillas. I would like to thank all my teammates for helping me win the Special Teams Player of the Year and all the fans who voted for me. Lake City's Jermaine Burgess with the 97 yard interception return against Darlington. Yeah, I'm Jermaine Burgess from Lake City, and I just won the Defensive Player of the Year award. And, man, I know it was mine. i like to thank my coaches, my mom, my dad, and I knew I had it wrapped up. It's showtime, baby. The computers were sure busy in Bennettsville thanks to everyone who logged on to WPDE.com to cast their vote. We're going to move on now to a new award in the All Zone Banquet. This is a first. We're going to award a Scholar Athlete of the Year, and this award is just as important as the Zoman because it shows a player who can get it done on the field and more importantly in the classroom. Mark Haggard has our winner. Welcome to the high school home of Porter Johnson. This kid is really something special. Honor student, baseball star, and we're talking about the end zone here, football star. Porter also plays basketball. And he's the strongest student athlete ever to walk the hallways at Loris High. The most impressive dimension of Porter's resume? His grades. This young man has two ways to go. Either an academic or athletic scholarship. He already knows he wants to major in engineering. My overall average is 4.5, but my core, my core average is 3.8. Porter scored 11.30 on the SAT test, and he's no stranger scoring points on Friday nights with 25 trips to the zone. He goes to church every Sunday, and that tells you a lot about a young kid right there being, you know, 16, 17 year old. Sunday morning, he's going to be in church. He's going to be a team leader. He's going to do the right things. He's going to make it in life. Porter was named News Channel 15's Defensive Player of the Week as a sophomore when he came out of nowhere, returning this fumble for his first varsity touchdown ever against Myrtle Beach High. Well, I saw Porter when he was playing Little League football down in 6th, 7th grade down there and realized then that he had a knack for uh, being a leader and being, a, being an athlete. He was a chubby thing down there, but once he got into the ninth grade, with his uh, athleticism uh, and get after it and his drive to be the best he possibly can be, I realized that he's going to be something special to coach, and he has been. Defensively, Porter had 127 tackles his senior season, but this lion stardom comes from his incredible offensive numbers, running for more than 1,500 yards, getting 6.7 yards per carry. I squat. I mean, I squat 525 and deadlift 555. And on the bench, 305. I think on the bench could have been higher, but. Porter says he's always dreamed of becoming a Clemson Tiger. But now the South Carolina Gamecocks are also on his mind. And I went to Clemson this past summer for an engineer program. So that's basically what I want to be. Porter Johnson of Lawrence, the WPDE All-Zone Scholar Athlete. 
Porter Johnson Alores, congratulations, our WPDE All Zone Scholar Athlete. Um, I'm proud to have this award. And first, I want to thank my mother because well, for her, I wouldn't have these good grades. She's always you know forcing me to do my homework and studying and stuff. Great season for Loris. You ready to move on to Clemson? How do you do it, balancing the books and the sports? Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna have to do it, I guess, and make sure I keep calling my mother to make sure you know she keep me on task. <laughs> Porter Johnson, congratulations. Time to take a break. When we come back, the waiting is over. You ready, Porter? The three Zoman finalists will be revealed, and our Zoman winner. That's when our All Zone special continues right here for Wild Wing Plantation. The time has come for us to reveal the three finalists for the Zoneman Trophy. Without any further ado, here's Mark Haggard with three very special young men. He starts at both linebacker and running back. Corey Groover, six foot three, 250 pounds. Groover is built like a tank. He's so imposing that even one of his high school teachers was taken aback when she first met him. I must admit that I was a little afraid of that when he came into my classroom the first day, but Corey and I had a, a very good relationship. Corey is a, a pleasant young man. I look forward to teaching him. I taught him CP English 3, and I look forward to teaching him next semester CP English 4. Hannah Pamplico head coach Stan Drotty says, Corey has used his talent on the football field to overcome great sadness in his life. When Corey was young, he lost his mother and his grandmother in the same month and uh, he's been he spent some time in a boy's home and he um, has lived with his sister uh, since she got up old enough to take care of him and you know to have that kind of past and and to have come through that is pretty special and and I think that uh, what Corey has done uh, on the football field and on the basketball court and even in, in the school, in the classroom, it has been quite remarkable. Groover is earmarked to play linebacker at Clemson. His senior season with the Raiders, Groover recorded 132 tackles, including six sacks. I love defense. You know, defense, and I get to sit there you know, and get free licks on people. I, I just love you knowing to hit people. You know, most of everybody smaller than me, and then I do get a big person. I just love you know, contact, um, playing hard. I love defense better. You know, I just, I just feel it. You know, I just get pumped up. Groover wears big diamond earrings even when he suits up on Friday nights. We don't know if they're real. We're afraid to ask. On offense, Groover has scored 25 touchdowns for the Raiders with more than 1,000 yards on the ground. He has three kickoff returns for touchdowns and caught three passes for scores. Although Groover is the Raiders' superstar, there is no I in Corey. He's the consummate team player. I scored a lot of touchdowns and I was recognized in front of a lot of people. But then again, it wouldn't be possible if I had no teammates. So it was kind of hard as, to say to get away from the team part because we play hard as a team. Hannah Pamplico's Corey Groover has been selected to play in the Shrine Bowl. And he's a WPDE News Channel 15 Zoneman finalist. Marlboro County quarterback Savelle Newton stands 6 feet 2 inches tall and weighs 205 pounds. Friday night's number 17 makes magic on the gridiron. Now his focus is on the zoneman. Last year was the first year Tom Rear got it. And, and then the second year, you know, the first two years, just to bring it to Marlboro, that would be a big accomplishment for me. Newton finished as the fourth leading rusher in the state with more than 1,900 yards, scoring 21 touchdowns. He passed for 1,700 in the air with 23 TD passes. After all that, hard to believe he was kicked off his middle school team. Sometimes he, he'd get into a little trouble, but nothing serious. In my eighth grade year, got kicked off the middle school football team that was going undefeated, but we had got, they had got beat. They lost every game after um, we had got, me and a couple of fellas had got kicked off the team. I ain't going to say what we got kicked off the team for, because that's too funny. Somebody had left the concession stand open, and, I mean, the ice cream machine was there, and they got him an ice cream out of there and wasn't supposed to. And uh, so they were all kicked off the team. And I think Savelle, I think he learned a valuable lesson there. Savelle is an accomplished drummer. He nearly gave up football to play in the high school band until head coach Dean Boyd convinced him to play for the dogs. 
Yeah, I used to love being playing the drums. I still play. I still can play them, but you know, football is. I can do that way better than playing the drums. With Newton at the controls, Marlboro County just completed a perfect season, going 15 and 0, winning its second 4A state championship in four years under Coach Boyd, who is happy to have Savelle back for one more season. I feel comfortable with him coming over and suggesting things or are checking off on the field almost at any time because he sees things so quickly and he's so football savvy. This, it's hard to teach that to young men. And for one to have it as a junior and, and to show the leadership that, he's done, he, that he has is unbelievable. His nickname, Strictly Business. Now when he's off the field, he cuts up and has a good time and that sort of thing. But when he steps across those white lines, it is Strictly Business. Marlboro County junior quarterback, Savelle Newton, Zoneman finalist. Lakeview linebacker and running back Anthony Waters is listed as six foot three, two hundred five pounds. Waters has already given Clemson his verbal commitment to play outside linebacker. So who is this wild Gator whose teammates know him by another name? My nickname is Aunt Ho, and I got that from one of my aunts. She gave it to me a long time ago, and ever since then, everybody just called me Aunt Ho instead of Anthony. The man they call Ant Hole hails from an army of waters. Yeah, I come from a family of nine. And I'm only, the, I'm only the, the football player. My brother used to play until he got hurt. He's from a family of athletes. His uncle, who I played with in 81, and his mother played basketball. And he's, the, he's got, I think, four, four brothers, four sisters. He's from a big family. And he's... um. He's a hard-working young man. He, nobody has gave him anything. Waters is a bone-jarring tackler with more than 130 stops for the Wild Gators his senior season. On the other side of the ball, Waters ran for more than 1,300 yards with 21 touchdowns rushing and two more through the air. Head coach Jewel McLaurin says Waters' toughness was put to the ultimate test his junior year. And he's been a pleasure to coach. And, and like I said, he's... Last year he broke his foot and he tried to come back at the end, which he shouldn't. The doctor said, you know, he'd need to wait a little longer, but he still wanted to get out there and he hobbled around in the last game knowing he was about one-tenth speed, but he wanted to get out on the field. Lakeview senior Anthony Waters is headed to the Shrine Bowl. He's a WPDE News Channel 15 Zoneman finalist. Mark, thanks so much. This is one of my favorite part of the show because these guys have to sweat it out. For starters, I have a little ice cream for Savelle, so you don't need to sneak back there. Are you all set now? <laughs> uh, no comment. This is a nervous time for all three of these young men. To let you know how the Zoman goes, the Zoman has votes of every area high school football coach as well as members of the media who cover WPDE and the end zone on a regular basis. So in all, there were 44 people casting a vote for the Zoman. The three men you see here are the finalists for this prestigious award. And uh, it's uh, with great pleasure, the waiting is over. I won't make these guys uh, wait it out any longer. I'm going to turn it around and let everyone know that the Zoman is going back to Bennettsville. Savelle Newton, the winner of the 2001 Zoman. Take that ice cream. <laughs> Congratulations. We're going to start off with Anthony Waters and Corey Groover. Congratulations. Anthony, Lakeview, great season. And uh, say a few words, because this is quite an honor to get on this stage as a Class 1A player. You're, you're breaking new ground here. Well, even though I didn't win the zone, it feels great to be a finalist. And I'd like to congratulate Savelle. And uh, Lakeview had a good football season this year, even though we were to be the underdogs, but we came out every practice and we had a pretty good season. Anthony Waters, a class act. Congratulations. <laughs> Corey, I know Tommy Bowden likes to look at that tape. Are you charging down that sideline? This is a big fella. You're going to be wreaking havoc for the Tigers on defense. Congratulations on this honor. Uh, I'd like to thank Bill Newton. He um, won it. Um, I said if I ain't went state, you know, that ain't matter, but now we ain't win state. It kind of matter a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, congratulations to all of them. Um, a lot of be up here with one of the best. And uh, hope we go to Strombo. No stop for taking home. All right. Corey Groover, ladies and gentlemen. Savelle, if you can come up here. 
We were teasing you about the ice cream, but now this is your moment. Congratulations on winning the Zoman. You are the second ever Zoman winner, and for the second time, the Zoman's going back to Bennettsville. Well, you know, um, first I want to thank my mom and my dad for um, making it possible for me to be here and thank Coach Boyd and all the other coaches and the players because, you know, at one time I was thinking about giving up and the players, they really talked to me and told me, hey, you, you, without you, you know, things wouldn't go right. So that's, that's, who I want, that's the main people who I want to thank, just the players. And the seniors, they showed great leadership to get me here and to get this award. And to the, to the other two finalists, yay, y'all are some good players too. You're a junior, so this is a first question. Are you going to be back here next year hoisting another zone? And you can maybe talk to Raymond Felton, who's got a Mr. Hoop zone, and he may be going for a second award as well. That's an interesting dilemma for you. Well, you know, um, you have other good juniors like Conway's, Melvin, Singleton, and many other more, so ain't no telling what, what the future may have. How are you feeling right now? I, I know you've talked to Tom here, Zimmerman, who won this last year. It's got to be special to be able to bring this to school and uh, show everybody that you won the zone. And well, you know, um, Tyler, he was the best. I mean, he always going to be the best high school player I ever played with in my life. And, you know, it's, it feels good just to know that Marlboro County has the good players. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the 2001 Zoman winner, Savelle Newton from Marlboro County. And that will do it for another magnificent high school football season. Thanks so much to all of the coaches who help us week in and week out put the end zone on the air. And to all the great folks behind the scenes at WPDE who bring you the magic every Friday night at 11.15. For all the young football players out there, whether you're in Pop Warner or Junior High or 11 or 12-year-old mites, one day you could be on this stage. So keep working hard, and we'll be here every year to bring you the All Zone Banquet. A new tradition has begun. A second time winner from Marlboro County, Savelle Newton. For Mark Haggard and Walt Lehman, I'm Rich Krampanis. Thanks so much for joining us. And get ready, the Hoop Zone is coming January 4th. We'll see you then.